In this video, we are first going to look at some examples of when you might want to control randomness. Next, we'll review the specific technique that you can use to control randomness in all of your games, including some C-sharp code that you'll be able to drop straight into a Unity project. Finally, I'll do a case study from one of my own Game Jam games to show you just how flexible and powerful this technique can be. The need to control randomness in games comes up all the time. Maybe you're making a game in which the player has a 25% chance to score a critical hit. You don't want the player to get too many critical hits in a row, but you also don't want the player to go for too long without any critical hits. Maybe you're making an adventure game with a quest system in which the player is defeating bandits to collect gold coins. We'll say that every bandit has a 50% chance to drop one of these coins and the player needs 10 of them in order to complete the quest. We know on average it should take 20 bandits to get those 10 coins, but some players might get it in exactly 10 if they get super lucky and there's no upper bound on how unlucky a player could be and how many bandits they would have to defeat in order to get their 10 coins. And finally, maybe you're making a match three style puzzle game and you're spawning shapes of different colors. You want a distribution of all the different colored shapes, but you don't want too much of the same in a row. There's one tool that lets you cover all of these situations and that's a marble bag. A marble bag is this concept. It's based on the idea that you imagine you have a bag of marbles and every marble inside the bag represents one of the possible outcomes. Let's use a simple example. Suppose you have an event in your game that is supposed to choose either orange or blue, each with an equal 50% probability. One way to do it would be a simple line of code. Let's say it's a random dot value is less than 0.5F. If it is, we'll say that the outcome is orange and otherwise it's blue. This is a lot like flipping a coin. You could flip a coin and assign heads to orange and tails to blue. But another way to do this randomness would be to imagine filling a bag with 10 orange marbles and 10 blue marbles. You can draw the marbles out of the bag one at a time, and each individual outcome will still appear to the player to be a 50% chance, but you'll be guaranteed 10 orange and 10 blue marbles by the end. From the player's point of view, these two scenarios will both feel like 50-50, but the range of possible outcomes with the marble bag is much more controlled against unlucky streaks. In fact, you know that after 20 draws, the player is guaranteed to see 10 orange and 10 blue of the outcomes. You can generalize the marble bag concept to a wide variety of applications. For example, if you wanted to model a 25% chance to land a critical hit, you could simulate this with two critical hit marbles and six normal hit marbles and throw them all into a bag. Now, suppose you as a designer wants to have a bit more variance than simply two and six, well, you could increase the count. You could have 25 critical hit marbles and 75 normal hit marbles. Remember that questing example from earlier? You may have figured this out already, but you could put in 10 gold coins found on the bandit marbles and 10 no coin found outcomes. When the player defeats a bandit, you draw an outcome from the bag. Now you know that the player is guaranteed to finish the quest after killing 20 bandits. How about that distribution of colors in the match three puzzle game? Well, toss in five marbles of each color, and each time we want to create a new shape, we simply draw a marble out of the bag to see what color shape we should do next. Now here's the code I use for a marble bag. It's a templated C-sharp class, so it can handle any data type. You can store letters, numbers, Boolean values, colors. We can initialize the bag with a set of starting values statically in code such as initializing with Boolean values if we're just doing true false tests or some colors or whatever you need. Anytime you need a random outcome, you simply call bag.next. When the bag is empty, it resets automatically, taking all the contents and putting them back into the bag. So you can just keep calling next endlessly and it will always give you a controlled distribution of the random outcomes. Let me show you how I used marble bags extensively in a recent game jam I did called Piggy Pile Up. I'll put a link to the game in the video description below if you want to check the game out, but it won't be necessary to understand my example. In Piggy Pile Up, letters drop down from above and fill a pig pen. The player connects letters together to try and spell words. My initial implementation of the game had a fixed distribution for each of the different letters to appear, but this often resulted in some very skewed distributions of letters. 
Even though I was setting the probability of each letter to appear, it was still possible for the player to find themselves in a situation where too many E's might appear or maybe you get two K's in a row. It'd be kind of awkward. I also noticed over time that the ratio of vowels to consonants was extremely important. And so, the marble bag to the rescue. Piggy Pile Up is actually made up of nested marble bags. The top level marble bag determines wh whether the next letter to be spawned is going to be a vowel or a consonant. Next, if the game decides that it's going to spawn a vowel, it draws from the vowel marble bag. If it's going to spawn a consonant, it draws from the consonant marble bag. This allows very precise control of every letter, while also controlling the balance of vowels and consonants over time, which helps a lot with the enjoyment of the game. The last thing I noticed while working on the game is that the rarest letters in the English language, J, K, Q, X, and Z, during playtesting I noticed it was frustrating to get multiple of these very rare letters together. It was also frustrating to get the same of these rare letters in a row. Another marble bag to the rescue. The rare letters are actually represented by a single rare marble inside the consonant bag. In this manner, the frequency of the letters can be controlled. So when the rare letter marble comes up, we simply draw from the rare letter bag and those rare letters will rotate through themselves. You can see how the marble bag technique is extremely versatile. It provides the designer with a lot of flexibility and can be nested with itself, other marble bags, to accommodate the specific needs of your project. I hope you found this overview of controlling randomness in games useful. If it's your first time visiting this channel, welcome. We talk game design and game jams here. In my day job, I'm a game director at Blizzard Entertainment, but this YouTube channel is a completely separate endeavor and the views and opinions expressed here do not necessarily reflect those of my employer. Tell me how you would use this randomness control technique in a game that you would make. If you leave a note about a Blizzard game, I may have to delete it. Please consider subscribing if you found this information useful. Making games is hard, but with some practice and a commitment to learning, you can do it. Happy game making.